Well, hello again, friends. Guess what? I promised that we were gonna pickle some beets and today is the day. Well, today is partially the day. Um, I like to do this in stages because I only have snippets of time throughout my day and throughout my week. Um, so yeah, we're going to, I follow a recipe in a neat little book, uh, The Canning Kitchen. If ever you uh, have a chance to grab this, I think I just got this at Indigo Books. It had beautiful pictures and it was simple recipes because I don't like to get into anything too, you know, extravagant. I'm just not that kind of gal. I don't have that skill level yet. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do to prepare is apron up, glove up, because we know that when you're dealing with beets, your kitchen can look somewhat like a murder scene. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not really into cool, like scrubbing beet juice out of a white apron or anything. So I'm going to glove up, we're going to suit up, and we are going to get these lovely beets, which I picked last night. Some big ones, there's some little ones. We are gonna get those boiling because the technique that it tells me in this book is really cool. You just throw them in boiling water and then the skins kind of slip off. So that may help reduce uh, the scene of our uh, murder-like uh, kitchen. So hang in there. I'm Lorianne from Stonehaven Shorts. And if you are a prairie girl like me, you don't know everything and you wanna learn along, Maybe we're gonna dust off some of our ancestors' recipes. Maybe we're gonna try and figure out some new things. Um, hang in. All right, I'll see you on the flip side. We're gonna get these boiling after I get suited up in my hazmat beat situation. All right. Hey, gloves, wax paper, apron. Now, I just a quick little side uh, note here. I absolutely love aprons. Um, my mom used to always wear an apron and I've seen really cool styles of aprons and now I get it. I know why they wore aprons because you don't get your clothes all dirty and have all that extra laundry to do. The apron is a great uh, towel. Uh, it's a great piece of art. It is a great fashion statement. So I highly recommend aprons, especially for jobs like this. Um, and if you have the chance, and maybe, you know, as things progress here, maybe I'll even go through how to make a quick little easy apron. So that's my little uh, spiel on aprons. I absolutely love them. Now, I have trimmed up and washed these beets. Now I still have the peel on. I haven't taken the peel off. I'm still little tidbits of growing love there. And you've probably heard me say before, but I try not to waste anything. So. We have all these lovely beet leaves and the beet stalks. I trim up the beet leaves, I wash them, I uh, blanch them and throw them in the freezer. Well, sometimes I blanch them, sometimes I don't. I just throw them in the freezer. And those little stalks, you can do a couple of things. You can, they look really cool in a veggie plate. You just chop them up and you eat them, just like celery. Or you can put them in your freezer like I do. I have a scrap vegetable bag. And once that gets filled, then I make my own vegetable broth. So <clears throat> of course it's gonna add a little bit more red tinge to your vegetable broth, but the taste is spectacular, especially if you're planning on doing borscht anytime soon, which I have actually done borscht already. Cause I love borscht. All right, so left, the peels on, we're throwing it in a pot of water. And what they tell us is to keep it boiling to about, you know, 30, 35 minutes until they're just fork tender. Definitely you don't want them too tender because you're gonna pickle them and you have to be able to manage them. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work out. I got a really big one here. I might just uh, slice up into quarters because I also have these little baby ones and I want them all to be done at the same time. And I'm hoping I can just throw these little guys right in to the sealers and they look really cute. So I'm not gonna bore you with me boiling this. Once they're boiled, you and I are gonna learn how to take these uh, skins off really super easy. Hang in there, catch in a bit. All right, so 
I have cooked these for about 30 to 35 minutes and we're gonna see how quickly that skin comes off from the tail. <laughs> Literally when I picked it up, it was starting to peel off. Look at that. This is how easy that skin comes off. What? Crazy. Now I should maybe let it cool a little bit more. It's a little warm here for me, but um, yeah, that's super easy. I'm just gonna take a small one here and see. Yep, just as easy, just as easy. So this is where the gloves come in handy. You're really just rubbing the skin off is all that it is. Now, uh, the, there's a downside to this. And I don't even know how big of a downside it is, but my mom used to make this uh, grape jam and she used to make it with beet juice. And so the downside of boiling this with the skin on is that you don't get that really red, juicy, flavorful juice to use for your grape jelly afterwards. But don't fear because this clearly isn't the first time I'm gonna have beets in my kitchen and I will make that grape jelly uh, just after I do a few other boiling. Like I'm actually gonna try and make some Harvard beets for the freezer, so yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna quickly peel off the rest of this skin here and then we're going to prepare these for the jars. Now, I've already picked out my jars um, I have a certain style of jars I like for beet pickles. And I've run them through the dishwasher. I've inspected the lids to make sure that they're good to reuse or buy new ones, whatever you choose. Uh, like I've said before, I'm not really into the whole buying new lids every time. I just inspect them to make sure that they're in good shape. Whatever. Oh, I've never died and I've done this, been doing this for over 20 years now. so. Uh, but it's entirely up to you. I'm not going to recommend one way or the other. Uh, but after I ran them through the dishwasher, then I'm going to put them in the oven, uh, the lids and the jars at about 200, just to make sure that they're nice and warm. And then they'll be ready for when we're done the brine and ready to stuff our little pickles into the pickle jars. Oh, and I have a hand, remember I was telling you, well, I don't know if you remember, maybe you're new, this is the very first video, but I was telling you that I love tools. Tools are what makes it easier for us. And so when you invest in good tools, and although they might be a little bit pricier, it really makes a difference in how quick you get things done, how less frustrated that you are. So I have a little tool that I use for beet pickles and I use it for deviled eggs and I use it for a dish that my family, it's not a dish, it's a cookie called Suga Kuga. Uh, it's just a little decorative thing. So I'm gonna finish peeling these and then we're gonna start slicing them and getting them into jars. All right, we're gonna get a little closer and personal here. I've gone ahead and finished up peeling all of the beets. Um, introducing my cool little wavy cutter tool thing. I don't even know what it's called. I got it as a gift from my mom uh, 15 years ago. Uh, she used to do these little care packages um, because I lived in Saskatoon and she lived um, in Southern Saskatchewan about a four or five hour drive. And every time all of her girls, cause I come from a family of four girls, every time all of her girls came down, she always had these little care packages and she would keep them in uh, in the spare room closet and they would have little little bags, one for each little girl. And in there would be just neat little things. And, and this was one of them. I have since seen them, I think uh, with Pampered Chef, but you know, you, you could look online, you could look uh, at Canadian Tire, they might even have them, I'm not sure. Anyways, this, is the cat's meow it makes it look so pretty oh and cucumbers i do cucumbers with this too it's really cute all right now uh, do, 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 do. Well, i'll try this one this is about a medium sized one here and we don't want to go too thin you want to go about a quarter of an inch and it literally just slices these little guys just perfectly i'll hold it up and show it to you here in a moment And there you go. 
Isn't that cute? Little ridged, hopefully you can see it there, little ridged uh, beets. It makes really cute beet pickles and very um, decorative when they're in the bottle. So I'm going to go through and finish up slicing all the rest of my beets and then we'll get to putting them in the jar. Um, you know what? No, we're going to do the brine first and then we'll get to putting them in the jar. All right, as mentioned, we're going to mix up some ingredients here for the brine. Um, and then once it's boiling, it's kind of my multitasking thing. Once that's boiling or getting to boil, I start stuffing the jars. So I'm going to get all this in here. Now, according to this recipe, I didn't really measure my beets or weigh my beets because I don't do things exact. I'm not very scientific. I take a bunch of beets and then I take some jars and then I make some brine. That's about what I do. I don't measure it out too much. It's kind of experience. Here's my word of advice to anybody that is just starting out with um, doing uh, pickling or preserving. Always double your brine because once you have your vegetables or whatever it is in your jars and you're short on brine, it's annoying because you have to stop everything you're doing and make another batch of brine. In reality, it's vinegar and sugar and water, so it's not gonna break you if you have to waste a little bit. I always double my brine. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. This recipe makes five uh, two cup jars. Uh, ooh, my jars are still in the oven, but um, I probably will get to the five. I might have a little bit more. I might have a little bit less. Regardless, I'm doubling my brine because I don't want to have the pain of having to redo it again. So in this brine, three cups of white vinegar. Now I've read on the, uh, the internet lately that uh, the amount of acid in vinegar is of some concern to people as of late. It's true, there are different percentages of vinegar. I have noticed that just recently in my life. Um, and there's also a difference in cost when you have a higher acidic level in those vinegars. So I don't like to cheap out when it comes to vinegar. This particular vinegar is 7%. I have used 5%. I've seen on store shelves of 3% and I don't, I don't, I don't know, maybe well, it was good on French fries, maybe. Um, but so I would never go less than 5% and ultimately I like 7%. So we need three cups of this vinegar. And again, you can see my happy little tool that I always use. Good old fashioned, I think it was Tupperware that had these measuring cups at one point. All right, I got three cups of vinegar. Then we need one and a half cups of water. I just happened to have that redone too. Look at this old baby. Yeah, saw this one at a thrift store. Snap that up. It is so handy. Anyways, uh, one and a half cups of water. Now, I said I was doubling this recipe. Duh. Okay, so I got to do this all again once I get it all in here. Anyways, uh, one and a half cups of water. Three tablespoons of pickling salt. Pickling salt is such a drag to have to store over the winter time when you're not actually pickling. So um, rather than leaving it in boxes and stuff, I find a nice little jar and I put it in that. So three tablespoons of pickling salt. One, two, and three. And two tablespoons of sugar. One and two. Now, I'm doubling it. So let me just do all that again, shall we? <laughs> so sorry to waste your time. Talk amongst yourselves while I fix this little syrup of mine. And I don't like to be short on, oh look, that was a perfect pour. That's through another three cups of vinegar. I don't like to be short on salt when I'm doing this because I kind of like saltier things. So uh, one and a half cups of water. It's 
sorry, to step out of view here for a moment. One and a half cups of water. Another three tablespoons of salt. <coughs> so if it's heaping a little bit, I, I just call that a little extra love. <coughs> oh, hello, vinegar. <coughs> I can smell you. And another two tablespoons of sugar. All right. Now, that is it. We are going to boil this. Um, well, yeah, bring to a boil and make sure that we're keeping it stir it because you have a lot of sugar in here. So get that nice, clear, hot boiling liquid and then we're gonna pour it over our beets. So while that is on the stove, I'm gonna throw that on the stove and then I'll bring my jars out and I'm gonna start stuffing those jars. Not only are you gonna need beets, but if you have a fresh sprig of rosemary for each jar, so five, uh, five sprigs or however many jars that you have, um, man, I'm telling you, it makes a, such a difference in the flavor and it's so, it's a sharp, beautiful pickle. So I'm also going to bring my rosemary over here. I have some growing in the window and yeah, I'm going to gather all that stuff, get this on the stove and I'll meet you back here. All right. So I have that on there. It's boiling. So I'm going to jet over and check on it for a little bit too. So I have one disposable glove on as my packer. And these are my jars. They are still a little bit warm. I, I really just like the design of these. And you know what, I can I can roll through one of these really easy in, uh, in a meal. So it's a nice size. I have some that are maybe a little bit smaller uh, and a little bit wider. So whatever. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start packing it in. Now, when I was chopping them up you can you can see that i had made those fancy little designs but it occurred to me that yes most of them oh i'm not going to get to five i don't have enough beets here uh that most of the pickles beet pickles are round and that's great and fine and wonderful but i'm all about coloring outside the lines so i actually made them um what vertical uh just because they fit in a pickle dish better and then that way it's not, you're not getting red beet juice all over your white tablecloth that you have at Christmas time. So I just made them a little smaller and a little different. Uh, I think that's good like that. I don't know that I'm going to get to five. I'm going to try and do it fairly snug. And then I'm, oh well, yeah, and I need about a little bit of head space there. And I also want to start a little new tradition for myself. I want to put one of these little baby beets on top just because it's the beet pickle of love. Um, I don't know if you remember opening up a craft peanut butter jar. Maybe they still have it. And there's always a peanut. It's the one with the peanut on top. Well, my pickles are the one with the baby beet on top. So I thought that'd be kind of cool. I'm gonna push that, just make sure it's nice and snug because there's nothing worse than wasting jars um, with a lot of brine floating around and nothing in there. Okay, now, like I mentioned, I'm taking this off because I'm gonna do my rosemary. So I need, well, possibly five sprigs. I don't know that I'm gonna actually even get to five. So I'm gonna snip off a little bit, just, just a little bit. I'm gonna give that a nice um, rinse under hot water and then I'm gonna to top them up in each jar. So rather than you uh, watching me do each one of these jars, I'm gonna quickly pack them all, get this washed up, throw one right on top, and by that time, the brine will be ready, and we'll see what all that looks like. Okay, you know, it's funny how things bring back memories, but uh, I have a canner, and I didn't have a canner for the first 10 years that I was doing this stuff. So I splurged on one and I got one. It's actually probably due for replacement already. My mom never used a canner ever that I remember. She used a turkey roaster and she put on both burners and she just bubbled up the water and she put her, her sealers in there, bathed them. You could hear them bumping around a little bit. And then she didn't have one of these handy little tools. She just used a tea towel on one hand and a tea towel on the other and she'd pull them out and she'd tighten them and yeah. 
So anyways, you don't need to have all the fancy dancy tools. There's a lot of things that you can do just by, you know, using your imagination. However, I'm partial to not burning my hands these days. So I just grabbed my jar and I have a nice little rack. It actually I think takes five, but I only have four. My water is to a point where it's steaming and just about to bubble. Now these are meant, these, these jars are a little bit bigger than a pint. So let's see, I might not, I might not do very well in the spacing of them. And to be honest, I might have to use my fingers because my little tool is too big. See, mom had it down pat. Yeah, cool. Had to use my fingers. All right, so there we are. And now it is just about to boiling. I'm seeing some movement there. I lower this down. Oh, hello. Yeah, no, that's, that's okay. I'm gonna lower this down, it's not too hot, into the bath. Now, some people say cover it all. I've read where you should cover it all with water. I don't cover mine all with water. I do get very close to the bottom rim. Um, and I leave it like that for 15 minutes. I've never had a problem. So do whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm just gonna grab my lid for this. And it's not even gonna go down all the way because my my folding rack thing is poking up my lid. And that's okay because my jars are a little bit bigger. So time this 15 minute bath. We're gonna bring it out and we'll have some final notes. Okay, they've been boiled up, or not boiled up, but hot bath for 15 minutes with some low rolling boil water. Uh, then this is my little carrier. I don't know if you can see, reposition so you can see here. This is my carrier. I'm just gonna pop it up onto there. Now, a couple of things you can do. If you're okay getting your oven mitt wet, <laughs> which I am, I just take, I can take my oven mitt and take it out. I can do the tea towel method like my mom did, or I can be smart and use my little tool that I bought and just lift it out. Now I have marble countertops, so I have to make sure that I'm putting this onto a wood cutting board and not onto a cool surface because it could uh, break my glass. And I always, especially with beet pickles, I put it onto a wood surface because, um, or another surface, because it could stain. So there we have it, just get those out. And my kitchen doesn't look like a murder scene. Hello, that's kind of nice. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Now, as it cools, you will hear, of course, the pops. And if you don't, then I like I leave them for a good 12 to 24 hours without touching them, really. I try not to touch them. And then I just tighten them a little bit to make sure they're nice and sealed and put them downstairs where I keep them. Now, two to three weeks, you gotta, gotta hang in there two to three weeks and then they'll be ready to eat. People, there is nothing like throwing some beet pickles on the table to add a splash of color, for sure. I love doing that. The taste of these, I've had lots of beet pickles in my day and you know, as much as I love my mom, they just never were kind of anything I really liked. These ones is an entirely different recipe. So I highly recommend, give it a try. Don't be scared to make a mess. Whatever happens, happens learn with me. I've made lots of mistakes too. Um, yeah. And I think that's about it. I'm going to do a little bit more with beets while I wait for my cucumbers to be ready. And my zucchini isn't ready yet either. And here we are at the very beginning of August. I'm looking out towards my garden. Oh, maybe there's one out there now. Uh, I got a couple of ways that I do pickles for dill pickles. Um, so we can look forward to that. But until that time, I'm Lorianne. This is Stonehaven Shorts. This one probably, it was short-ish. It wasn't terribly short. 
And like I said, if you are Canadian and you're in the prairie and you're looking to learn along with me, boy, I could sure use a lot of help. So I look forward to seeing you again.